Well now, the BBC is quietly censoring its own archive and there's a reason why this is important, unlike any other censorship. There aren't many people who actually have access to the BBC archives. There are things there that don't exist anywhere else. So they are literally changing history by doing so. Very progressive BBC, very dynamic, very multicultural. Welcome to 2022. And what's interesting is that this isn't some big news. It's not everywhere. It's uh, on esoteric websites and in the National Review where you get to find out that this is happening. So there is a guy which is hired and he has to decide, just like uh, in Orwell, just like Winston worked for the government and he had to decide which news is appropriate for the public and which one is it. Isn't that beautiful? Don't you want that job? Don't you want to be in the position where you can decide what the children, I'm sorry, the citizens get to watch? Now, of course, they're doing this uh, in order to clear things that are offensive. Apparently, a Radio 4 Extra listener has discovered that uh, the BBC had been quietly editing repeats of uh, shows over the past few years in keeping with social uh, norms. So they're removing offensive language and stereotypes. So, so I have a question. Do you honestly think that this is why they're doing it, to remove offensive stuff? Because if I were to watch a movie from the past, or if I were to read a book, I'm reading a book from the past, and I see a person being burned at the stake because they're a sinner and they don't believe in God, or I see a noble that's killing a peasant because uh, the peasant has offended the noble's honor. Do you honestly think I would get offended or would I be like, okay, that's the time period from which the book has happened. That's how people thought back then. And it's so great that we progress from that and we don't live in that time anymore. It's almost like they don't want people to appreciate just how good things are today in order to make people constantly upset and outraged and turn them into revolutionaries. Isn't it more like that? You know, this whole thing started, I remember at least, <clears throat> when I joined the internet, the internet censorship started with feminism. Like, they're the first one that said, hey, if you make rape jokes, you normalize rape. In other words, if you say offensive things, you normalize the offensiveness. And I'm thinking like, wow, I don't know if that actually worked by censoring people from making rape jokes. Like, I, I don't know if, like, censoring people from doing that has decreased the actual rapes in society. Like, they never actually told about that. But what I do know it did is it normalized censorship, didn't it? Like this thing right now is normal. It would have been unthinkable 10 years ago. People would have been outraged. Now people are cheering. I'm going to make another video also about the UK. Probably release it uh, two days from now. But the government actually has a censorship committee. I'm not kidding. It's called the some like thing like misinformation unit, which is operated by the government. Now, what's interesting is that there was a controversy about that unit where you have the leftists complain, not because the unit exists, not because it violates human rights. No, no, no. They're complaining that they thought falsely that the unit was taken down, that the government shut down that unit. But apparently, no, the unit is functioning. And uh, what's interesting is just like the BBC censorship, it's opaque. You don't know what they're censoring. But at the end of the day, why do you need to know? Don't you trust the government? Don't you trust authority? Oh, you're doubting authority? Who do you think you are? Hey, if you doubt authority, you're a troublemaker, aren't you? You're either with the authority or against the authority. And we'll be the ones that are against the authority. I mean, this is the new way of thinking, right? This is the progressive way of thinking where uh, human beings aren't allowed to make their own decisions. You need a censor. And it used to be, oh, well, my private company can do whatever it wants. So it's fine if the private company censors. The thing is, like, you're normalizing censorship. Like, I your own ideology believes that rape jokes normalize rape. So why won't you believe that censorship done by private companies normalize censorship? Because now the government is censoring. Why? Because people are fine with it. It's normal. The government is the authority, just like the corporation is the authority. If you use its uh, social media platform or if whatever or if you're hired by the company, right? So is the authority, and just like the authority can censor, well, so can the government censor. What's the big deal? What are they censoring? No one knows. But it's being censored. 
And again, uh, the BBC, as mentioned in this article, has a lot of things in its archives that don't exist anywhere else. And once they're edited, once they're censored, they're gone forever. It's a part of human knowledge that you will never have access to, ever. Very sad, very depressing. They're not saying what, what is and isn't offensive. I mean, take into account that Dr. Seuss is offensive. Catcher in the Rye is offensive. Uh, 1984 requires trigger warnings. So just so we can understand the standard. Just so we can understand, uh, right? Because they're not censoring just uh, outright racist and offensive things. Which in my opinion shouldn't be censored if they were done in the past. It should be evidence of what things were done. Imagine if like you would censor Holocaust images because they're offensive. Right? Isn't that kind of the similar line of thinking? Isn't it really in the same? And it's very interesting because uh, of the justification. This is what I like. So now you need to censor because misinformation, right? Like if you don't censor, it's killing people. Like people talking to each other is killing people. At least that's what the government says. But in the past, right? It doesn't matter about because they're, they're not misinforming things in the past. No, in the past, it's offensive. So you constantly have companies, I mean, Disney, for the love of God, the mouse, haha, is making Snow White and the Seven Dwarves without the dwarves. If you're not aware of the controversy, it's because Peter Dinklage, who got famous for playing a dwarf in Game of Thrones and became a millionaire, I guess he doesn't want other actors to become famous like him. I, I guess he wants to be the only one. He, he wants to be... The only famous actor in Hollywood who can play the role of how how is the politically correct term? I guess people uh, with growth in parity or, or like how how am I supposed to say? I don't even know. I don't even know if the the word dwarf is offensive, especially like a Snow White. It's mythical creatures. Like it's not actual humans. And on top of that, they're they're also the positive characters. Like they're the good guys in that story. When I was a kid, I wish I had the dwarves as my friends. But okay, fine, you know, whatever. I mean, you don't want to offend people, so you need to change all-time classics that existed for thousands of years, probably. I don't even know if we can pinpoint the exact telling of Snow White, but usually these stories are passed on by word of mouth, so it's very difficult to tell when, when they came up. But whatever, you know, I, I mean, we need to change everything. Not because people want to change, by the way. Like, it's not the public that was outraged. It was one guy. It was a gatekeeper. Remember when geeks were problematic because they were gatekeepers? Oh, the correct... Apparently, gatekeeping isn't an issue. The problem was that it wasn't rich people doing the gatekeeping. How can Hollywood actors gatekeep if the actual fandoms were gatekeeping using their wallets? No, no, no. They needed to be gatekeeping. And the media, of course. So that's the, the main issue, and that's why people should be a little bit upset about this happening. In my opinion, it's just like the burning of Alexandria. Again, I, I don't care. It's history. And the very fact that you're doing it outrages me. Like, this genuinely offends me. The same way you're offended, if you're a progressive, if you're offended by Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs, this offends me just like you. Okay, just how you would be offended at Disney for making that. This is how I'm offended at BBC. Only I'm a little bit more offended because they're, they're smashing down historical artifacts. So, it is what it is. Um, but anyway, right, let me know what you guys think, and I'll see you in the comment section. Take care.